I am Jossie Ross. The album is Before Here Was Here. You're watching The Mechanism on allhiphop.com. Peace. It's a good thing because it allows us to switch it up and, and get into a couple of different topics. Now, we, we normally jump right into music with people. But you being an activist and, and also being a Native American, you get to come at this from a unique angle. A lot of the issues that we deal with nowadays, you know, from Baltimore to Ferguson, you know, it, it's, it's a repeat for us. Right. But you were here, your people were here and experienced it first. Right. You were the first ones to get got bamboozled, yeah. led astray, Plymouth Rock landed on you, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, you, you guys have war stories that go back since the beginning of this country. What's it like for you? Watching this evolve and, and, and seeing the injustices kind of come back around in 2015, knowing the stories that you know. Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting because you realize that, for, first of all, I appreciate the question. Thank you for having me. Um, it's, it's very important to understand that history repeats itself. And so it's a repeat for black folks. The interesting thing is that going from Donald Sterling getting caught saying some racial shit, right? But everybody, Elgin Baylor has been saying there was some racial shit for 30 years. You know, people, black men have known that there's been violence violence against black men by police officers for a long time. This is a new thing. The only difference is that now we have camera phones to record it, right? right. And so if it's a repeat for black folks, it's a repeat of a repeat for us. Right. Because we could have gave that warning, look, this is, this is what happens. This is what happens with state-sponsored violence. And so you see those waves of history, and me as a student of history, as an attorney that understands how it has been state-sanctioned. Mm -hmm. There's actually been a legal premise for all of these acts of violence. You start to understand, no, we're just replaying the 1800s, the 1700s. We really haven't gotten over that hump in the first place. Mm -hmm. What do we do to fix it? What can we do that's different? I mean, you, you have a law of mind. You also have the history on your side. How can we stop this cycle, as corny as that sounds? Like, how do we, how do we break out of this? Yeah. Well, you know, when I watch Baltimore and when I watch Ferguson... I realize that we are still fighting yesterday's battles. And, and so the answer to that is by number one, acknowledging it. Mm, okay. That's something we've never done collectively. And when I say collectively, I mean as an institution, United States, which we all are a member of, whether okay. we like it okay. or not. Okay. Um, and then number two, as people of color. And then thirdly, and the ones with a lot of culpability is this collective psyche of white people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're a consumer society. We're, we're a consumer society, and so as, as a consumer society, we oftentimes think like, oh, that old thing, that racism thing, right. we could just get rid of that. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that unless you address it, those scars stay. Martin Luther King said that before the Negro landed on this shore, there was also the scar of racial hatred. Mm -hmm. And unless you deal with that initial, that original sin, you can't even address what's going on in Baltimore because those folks are still, they're seeing that there's some inequity happening but they don't necessarily know why. And so we have to get to the why, and that's that acknowledgement piece. So, knowing what you know from a law point of view, yeah. uh, what's, what's the best way to combat this? Uh, we, it's, we can't, you and I can't get someone else to acknowledge their part in history, as far as, as far as white people are concerned, and maybe white privilege, et cetera, et cetera. Right. There's no way for you and I to sit there and go, hey, you guys have to acknowledge what you did. Yeah. So what do we do to deal with it in the meantime? I think what... A better question. Yeah, that's a great question, by the way. So yeah, we'll, we'll put, I, I was we'll, scared of what better is. We'll, 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 we'll stick a pin in that one. Okay. You know what? Let's do that one first, and then we'll come back to the one I have in my head. The first step is by analogy. It is possible to teach somebody about their privilege. And the way we do that is men. And, you know, you're a handsome dude. You're a, you're a dude. And you're, yeah, you know, you're a good-looking dude. And you're a guy in a, in, a, in a powerful position. You get to communicate media. And that's to recognize your own privilege, to recognize my own privilege okay. as a man. Like, oftentimes, we find ourselves, you know, seeing women, injustices that happen to women, and say, okay, we'll judge them. The Ray Rice incident last year was an example. Well, she shouldn't have been in the elevator. She shouldn't provoke him. Well, we have to say, no, this is a teachable moment. Okay. This is when okay. we can say, see, white people, this is an example for me. I should not superimpose what this woman should have done in that situation because I've never been a woman. Right. And I can't say what is reasonable in that situation for her to do in exactly the same way, white person, that you can't superimpose what is reasonable behavior when I see a cop, Walter Scott, and he starts running. Mm -hmm. Based upon 300 years of state-sponsored violence, that's a reasonable reaction. Mm -hmm. And so that's when you, get, you, you 
uh, you but a leverage. reaction you wouldn't know about if you've never been in that that's position. right so that when you when you give that analogy to say with my male privilege I want to look at that lens that hopefully allows a little bit of compassion say look just, just allow me give me the benefit of the doubt here to show you how we extend compassion mm -hmm. and so I think that's a start and you use those teachable moments there's a million teachable moments that are going on right now there's educational opportunities and the answer in my estimation is not simply to be combative and say you would never understand mm -hmm. but to say let me show you how you can understand mm -hmm. and you're gonna love this next part okay and with all that said yeah. with all that in mind exactly how much of this covers and inspire are you covering and is inspired by in your new project which is coming out <laughs> asap before yeah. here was there his brand new album right what we, what we brought you to talk to this man That's about right. How much of that falls into the album? Like, wh yeah. what's the vibe of the project itself? Is is any of this stuff in here? Can somebody hear something and right. you know get inspired for this? First of all, that's the that's the slickest segue I've ever. Because I was gonna forget Bro, about yeah, it. No, I, I forgot Bro. about the album. We was just building. I'm completely here. No, no, I appreciate that. Thank you for thank you for what I do. No, no, you're in town all week, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. birthdays, baby showers, bar mitzvahs. Right. I'm doing it all. Um, the the album the album itself the the name of it is Before Here Was Here. And the Blackfoot word, my tribe, is Iskutsik, before here was here, before the concrete was here. And what it does, the reason why that's the title is because it begs the question of how things got to be the way they are. How did things get to be the way they are? Yeah, we see the outcome, as we talked about last night, as good as it gets. You're, you're, I'm drowning and you're describing the water. We keep on describing the water, but how did you get in that freaking water in the first place? What can I do to get you out? And so that's what I'm talking about is the stories, the narratives of where that distrust came from. So, for example, there's a song on there called Jesus, which is about when missionaries came to native people and they handed us blankets because we were freezing. They, they killed 60 million. This is a historical fact. They killed 60 million buffaloes, which were the, how we got our blankets. We used buffalo robes. They were very warm. A lot of babies made under there. But then, yeah, no, they were effective. Buffalo and, and, babies. That's right. And, you, and, and they killed 60 million intentionally. And then the United States government. And then they gave us blankets. They said, these will keep you warm instead of those buffaloes. They didn't tell us that there was smallpox and, d and disease in those blankets. And so it creates an inherent suspicion about certain authority figures, whether they be priests or they be law enforcement or they be military generals. I fear the Romans even when they come bearing gifts. That's right. And so we're going we're gonna to see the, you know, try to lay a little bit, expose some of that, 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 you know, the, what, what's beneath the veneer mm -hmm. and see what was here before here was here and talk about that structure, those things that we can rely upon, what actually has substance and what's really just, you know, glitz and glamour.